guys, what's up? It's a Real Housewives review day. We are going to be breaking down this week's episode of the Real Housewives of New Jersey, season 11, episode 6. And before we get into this week's review, I'm doing something really fun with my channel. We're making it a little interactive for all of you guys. I will be featuring a subscriber comment in each of my reviews. So comment your best comment below. So today's featured comment, it goes to Carrie. She said, it's a little quote. She said, Kyle, y'all got more tea? Me, ear emoji, ear emoji, heart, heart. Y'all, when I saw this comment, I literally screamed. This was, this was an amazing comment. So, Comment your best comments below for a chance to be featured in next week's Real Housewives of New Jersey review. Let's get into this review, y'all. So we're going back down the shore. Is that how they say it in New Jersey? Back down the shore? Anyway, so before we head to the Jersey Shore, let's see what everyone is up to since last week's episode from the pool party. This week, we see Jennifer post pool party. So she's filling us in on the aftermath of how her night went after the party. She threw up all over Bill's car and all over her foyer. So we see her mopping the floor and I'm just gonna say it. This scene does not feel organic. It kind of seems set up by production. So they either staged this mopping scene or this scene was filmed prior and they just added that scene in because vomit and mopping the floor. But like, look at her going ham, mopping that floor with her pink rubber gloves. Go on, Jennifer. <laughs> so now, all right, I'm gonna admit when I was wrong, and I was wrong. Saying that Jennifer has an alcohol problem, I do feel like Jennifer is going through a lot. She has a lot of pressure on her shoulders with balancing the fact that her parents aren't getting along, being pinned in the middle of that, and it's really stressing her out. And I do believe that she just wanted to let her hair down, have some fun with all of her girlfriends. She might have overserved herself, but she was in a safe environment. She did have Bill as a DD. I was a little harsh with her last week. There, I said it. We'll leave it at that. So now let's move over to Dolores. She's over in her non-David house with Frank and family. Frank and Dolores, they're talking about the birds and the bees, y'all. Sex is heavily featured in this season of The Real Housewives of New Jersey. So Frank and Frankie Jr. share sex stories with each other. I find that a little bizarre. Not gonna, not gonna lie, not gonna front. A little bizarre. I would never share sex stories with my parents. Little creepy, little weird, but to each their own. So we finally get to see Dolores' daughter, Gabby. We haven't seen much of her. She has been very busy with vet school, but look at all of those dogs that she has. I think she might have overcommitted with all of those dogs. I think I counted like six or seven. <laughs> I'm a huge dog lover, but good God, that's a lot of dog energy. All I can think of is Melissa McCarthy driving that van in Bridesmaids with all of those puppies in the back. If you know, you know. So Dolores, she is receiving a special award for her work with breast cancer awareness. Dolores' whole family is there to support her. The dynamic between Dolores, Gabby, Frank, and Frankie Jr., I just, it just makes me very happy. They have a nice little genuine family unit. I'm glad that Dolores, you know, is able to have such a close relationship with her ex and the whole family is able to get along. It's it's really nice and they're really funny. Like they, the way they poke jabs at each other and make fun of each other, it's really funny to watch. And good for you, Dolores, for keeping that strong family unit. That's really commemorable for you. 
admir admirable for you there words. So moving over to Teresa, she's cooking for all of her daughters and Gia popping Melania zits. Ugh, no. Pop everything. Go for it. Wait, what are you guys doing? Oh my god, you're really popping pimples. Ah! Ew, that was a black hat. Mm-mm. Too, it reminds me too much of like, what's that show? Dr. Pimple Popper? Mm-mm. That, mm. Mm -mm. Gabriella and Teresa, though, they're wearing the same exact sweatpants. They're FaceTiming with Joe, and he now sells sex toys, and Teresa is now part of the dildo business. Don't fall down the rabbit hole, Teresa, going into business with Joe. Look at where it ended you last time. Clink, clink. So Teresa's divorce is now finalized. She is selling her house because she got to keep the house in the settlement. So she's getting rid of that shit. Here's the thing. I really do think Teresa is struggling with the loss of both of her parents, her divorce from Joe, selling her house, a new beginning, a new boyfriend, but there's always a but. It does not excuse her bad behavior. It does not excuse her bad behavior. It just almost seems as if something switched in Teresa. Like she used to be a firecracker in the early seasons, flipping tables. It's bitch better. Like I loved Teresa in the early Real Housewives of New Jersey seasons. She was just a firecracker. But now it just kind of seems like she's hitting below the belt and playing dirty. And it's almost not enjoyable to watch making up lies and rumors about people. It's a weird sort of delusional world that she's living in, and I wish that she would come back down to reality with the rest of us. It's almost as if the switch flipped when Melissa joined the Real Housewives of New Jersey. That's just my opinion. Get out of the- Marley! Get out of the litter box. Don't eat poop. Where's Gabby when you need her? Now Dolores, going over to Dolores again, she's back over at David's house for her big award party and y'all. David's house is gorgeous. Ring or no ring, commitment or no commitment, you move into a house like that. There, I said it, that's my opinion. So David, he missed the award presentation that happened earlier. It was a small little like intimate thing because of COVID. They couldn't have a big ceremony to officially give Dolores the award. So they did it very, a very small intimate setting with all of Dolores's family and um, a representative from the organization that is giving her the award. But like David didn't even show up. Like what the fuck, David? It's almost as if he's not even willing to put any effort into the relationship with Dolores. He could have rearranged his schedule. That's just my opinion. So don't come here and be like, he's a fucking doctor, blah, blah, blah. Save it. I am team Jennifer with the whole Dolores David thing. She's here, he's here having a party for her, yet he's not staying. I just don't get this at all. It literally does not make any sense to me. So now the ladies, they are pressing Dolores on why she doesn't live in this new house with David. And Dolores says that she just really likes her freedom and that she doesn't want to live with someone else. But let's just call it like it is. David doesn't want to spend time with Dolores and Dolores is playing it off as, I just like my freedom. It's weird, it doesn't make sense. But I've said it before in many reviews, and I'll say it again, if it works for Dolores, okay then. I'm just saying Dolores deserves better. So all the ladies, they are now packing for the Jersey Shore. Bill tells Jennifer that Joe B, Marge's husband, said that he has heard the rumor before. Tell me what the rumor is. That he's got a girlfriend. And to be quite honest with you, I have sort of heard the same rumors. Just wait for it. Wait for it, guys. This is where the episode is going to make a weird 180. It's going to get ugly. This is the shocking bombshell of the entire episode. So Margaret has defended Jackie tooth and nail. And the fact that her husband said that, he said that, don't let what I'm about to tell you later in this review set you off. 
Ugh, it's just not good. So now all the ladies, they are en route to the Jersey Shore in the car with Frank, Dolores, Teresa, and Jennifer. Jennifer brings up the Joe B. rumor that Bill told her earlier, and this adds fuel to the fire with Teresa. Side note though, Teresa shares with everyone in the car that her divorce is finalized, and Dolores says that she hopes that Teresa can find someone that gives her everything that she deserves. Like, Dolores can give good advice, but doesn't practice the good advice with herself. And let's just be honest, she does deserve so much better than David, I feel as if she is settling with David. So now back to the Joe B bombshell. The whole Jackie thing is now front and center again. So Teresa knows that Joe B has heard the rumor and has said it out loud. And Teresa is all, thank you, thank you. See, my story is validated now. But Frank Catania is a ride or die. What happens at guys' night stays at guys' night. Teresa having this information is like a bomb waiting to go off. And I want no part of that. So Teresa now has this information, and now we just kind of have to wait and see what she does with said information. Teresa is all, I'm not having Lake George round two talking about Jackie the whole time. But like, here we are talking about Jackie the whole time. So, okay. So we're finally at the Jersey Shore. The ladies are split. Half are staying with Dolores. Half are staying with Melissa. It's like we have teams. We have Team Teresa, Dolores, Jennifer, Teresa. And then we have Team Jackie, Melissa, The Marge, and Jackie. This whole rumor shit has gotten so bad that we can't even have everyone in the same beach house. I say put them all in the same beach house and let them fight like feral cats. Get it out of their system. Let them hash it out. Duke it out, say what you gotta say, move on. Teresa, stop running from the issue. Jackie, stop being a little crybaby and deal with it. Please. We gotta address the elephant in the room. They're at the shore for two days, and these ladies have packed so much shit. Jackie packed two huge suitcases. She needs options. I see that. I get that. I respect that. It speaks to me. I'm a secret diva. Joe, don't fall Thank backwards. you, I'm sorry. So now Team Teresa is over at Dolores' house. They're all cooking dinner for the ladies for the evening. Teresa got a call from her realtor and someone wants to view her house. And it's almost as if Teresa is getting cold feet. I remember watching season one of The Real Housewives of New Jersey and watching Teresa build that home from the ground up. And now here she is, season 11, selling the damn thing. Honestly, it's time for her to get rid of that house. I think it has too much negativity. It's time to start new. Maybe by Teresa selling the house and moving, she can be free of all the shit and maybe, just maybe, she can be a nicer person. So now Jennifer asks Teresa if she's going to be okay when Jackie walks in. And all Teresa says is, this is my turf. Dolores is my friend. What the hell, Teresa? So now all the ladies, both teams, are joining together at Dolores' house. And um, peep the pineapples. Also peep the mingle, y'all. Mingle Mocktails. I have loved Mingle Mocktails since I found out about that brand back in August. I won a contest and I got to mingle with the Marge. I also have her signature Cosmo. The Marge. Her signature Cosmo Mingle Mocktails for all my silver sisters. It's a non-alcoholic drink. It's sparkling. It is literally so good. And I have a freaking discount code. Use code 10KYLE to get 10% off your first Mingle order. Trust me, guys. You want Mingle. It's freaking amazing. And all my friends can vouch because I've got them all hooked on mingle. And um, yeah, I had so much fun mingling with the Marge. Got a lot of insider information, but 
What happens in the mingle stays in the mingle. Sorry about it. So here comes Teresa. It's the first time her and Jackie come face to face since the blow up at Marge's house. Teresa comes bearing gifts. Vibrators for all. You get a vibrator. You get a vibrator. You get a vibrator. Vibrators for everybody. She even got a vibrator for Jackie, which Teresa says, now you have something you can shove up your ass. Because Jackie said that Teresa can shove the olive branch up her ass. And Teresa is the queen of holding grudges and getting even. Jackie is all, stop it, Teresa. I'm not doing this with you tonight. Why does Teresa, like, have to freaking go there? Like, she is so aggressive. Like, why does she have to stoop to this all-time low level all the time? Teresa then says, I don't want to fight. I came bearing gifts. I think that's a nice thing. Not when you tell the person getting the gift they can shove it up their ass. Come on, Teresa. Do better. So this is, this is the issue for me with everyone babying Jackie. Jackie's a big girl. She knows how to hold her own, but everyone keeps going up to her like, oh my god, Jackie, are you okay? Are you good? Please don't cry, Jackie. Please don't burst out in tears. Like, Jackie keeps saying, please, I'm fine. I'm okay. Like, Jackie's a big girl. She can hold her own. Marge, Melissa, stop coddling her. Please, let her be. I think Marge and Melissa, they just keep making the situation worse. It's like each team is like, Team Teresa is riling up Teresa, and Team Jackie is riling up Jackie, and everyone is making the situation worse. Like, y'all, stop talking about it. Let it die. Please, let it die. So now everyone is at dinner for the evening and Teresa's divorce is brought up and the fact that it was finalized. Teresa says that Joe Gorga and Dolores need to take their words back because both of them last year at the reunion said Joe Judice would try to take Teresa's money. So that whole thing got Teresa super defensive and heated because then Melissa tries to explain that Teresa, you know, took it out of context and they were just trying to say that she deserves so much better than Joe Judice. And then Teresa turns to Melissa and tells her to shut up. So like this dinner goes from zero to a hundred, like really quickly. And Teresa is now on the defense and getting so aggressive. And now Marge brings up the vibrator gift to Jackie and telling her that shoving it up her ass was uncomfortable and, you know, everyone is uncomfortable with the whole Jackie and Teresa thing and that makes Teresa even more upset. And then Melissa then says, does anyone else have anything they want to say to get off their chest? And here it comes. You were here what your husband said at boys night? What do you say at boys night? Joe, why don't you tell everybody what you said at boys night? Teresa says that Joe B has heard the cheating rumor about Jackie around town. Joe B, though, denies it. He said that he never said that. And this then gets Marge so upset. And then Jennifer chimes in that Joe B did say it because her husband told her, which makes Marge explode. She's like, were you there? Were you there? Shut the fuck up then. Shut the fuck up. Stop interrupting. So everyone is now fighting with each other at this dinner. Like, why is Teresa pushing this rumor so hard? She's pushing it on to all these people. She won't even let it go. And I personally feel like Jackie may want to let this go. But everyone else keeps drudging it up. Keep, they keep giving it life. I'm like, enough is enough. So, so, Jackie then tells Teresa that she is an asshole and treats everyone like shit. Where's the lie? So then Teresa goes around and asks Dolores, do I treat you like shit? Jennifer, do I treat you like shit? Marge, do I treat you like shit? Do I treat you like shit? You did have my hair pulled. Wow, Teresa. All right, if you take that, that's fine. I mean, wait a minute, wait a minute. You <laughs> wow. We saw last season, bitch. We know what happened. You are a psychopath. But I just don't understand because then everyone looks at Jackie and say, look at the poor girl. She's going to burst into tears. Why does everybody think that 
Jackie is going to burst into tears at like the drop of a dime. Like she just stood up to Teresa. I think she's good. To get that confidence in jail. And just like that, I am back to being Team Jackie.